So we're outside the castle here and you can see behind me that most of the scaffolding has gone now. Um, and if you go around from the oldest part of the building, the keep, to the gatehouse here, if you look really closely, you can see that the huge crack that was running down there has been uh, made safe and consolidated. So there's been a lot of work done on there. If you move down then to the gate, you can see that the gates are still out. There with John Nethercott and Co who've been doing um, restoration work on them but the decision was made to put them back in at the last minute so that there's the least possible damage done to them by construction work. Um, and that's the gateway that princes, lords, ladies would have entered the castle through. And from there you get down to some of the old steps that we've got and these have been rebuilt because they were slightly unsafe using the original stones. And from them you go through to the new steps down here. So these were designed by the architects in order to kind of unite the, the town with the castle and offer this new welcome opening. Um, if you go down here you can see that the architects have incorporated this double depth design. So these steps here have been designed so that people can sit on them, use them as kind of benches and also kind of integrates the market square with the castle. Um, you'll notice that they're looking pretty bare at the moment. They're not finished, this is the concrete, and they're going to be clad with flagstones when they're done. So I think you can see that this is going to offer a really wonderful new entrance into the castle when we're finished next year. So we're here by the War Memorial and you can immediately see that the wall has been lowered here. So this was done to kind of visually unite all the areas of the castle, but it also opens up this area. Um, it's been done in conjunction with um, Kelvin Jenkins, the Royal British Legion and a grant from Powys. And so uh, conservation and restoration and some repairs are going to be done on the memorial itself. But one of the other things that's really important is that two names that have been missing all this time are going to finally be put on that war memorial where they belong. Uh, one of the other things you'll notice is the lighting there. We're going to replace that um, and update it and make it just a much more fitting setting for this war memorial. So we're at the bottom of the steps on the terraces and uh, if you've ever visited the castle in the past you'll remember how uh, steep, precarious and unstable these steps were. So they're having work done on them at the moment to make them more even, uh, safer and to put handrails on the side as well. And all the handrails around the site will be lit at night too. Um, what you can see here is a new design for the bottom of the steps. So we're going to have a stone landing and then stone steps going down with this splay, which gives us a bit more room in the Honesty Bookshop, but also here gives us this wonderful space for a sculpture. And what we've done is commissioned local artist Penny Chandler and she's done a bronze relief of Richard Booth. So Richard Booth, little bronze is going to go in right here, which I think is really fitting. Okay, we're going to go inside the building now. So through this little hole in the wall here, in we go. And you get this big dramatic space in here. And actually, this is what it's going to be like. Um, so the history of this bit of the building here is that there was a big fire in 1939, which means that it's had no roof for about 80 years, and that has had dramatic consequences on the walls. So at the tops of the walls, it's got very thin, and they were in dire danger of actually collapsing or falling down. So there's been a lot of work to consolidate them. And what the architects decided to do with this space is to, instead of reinstating all the floors and the rooms that they've been, because they've not been here for 80 years, to put in these mezzanine levels. So we've got the first floor mezzanine here, which is going to have a glass balustrade on the front. And then right above us there, we've got the second floor mezzanine or sculpture gallery. So these will give you fantastic opportunities to look at this big space. Now, it is going to have a roof back on it, the original roof as it would have been. Um, and what we can look at over here as well is where the lift is going to go over there. So you can see all the structural steels that are in place for that. So there's a lift for access. And then just to the right here, is where the staircase is going to go. Now, in the Jacobean mansion, we had a beautiful carved oak staircase there. It was a really beautiful piece of work. Unfortunately, destroyed in the 1939 fire, but the architects decided to put the staircase back in that original position. So we're going to have another oak staircase, but with steel structure in it, and this kind of bronze um, effect on the underneath. So staircase back where it was. 
And then over here as well, just got something to show. When you come in, because this is not going to be plastered, the walls are going to be like this, um, you can look for little details like this. So here, these little plugs, they actually tell us that we've got consolidation in this wall. So they're called Syntec anchors, and a large rod is... It, stone is drilled out, and a large rod is pushed in that has a kind of sock around it that's filled with mortar. So that strengthens the wall. And you can see here why we needed it. So this wall here has got a huge crack in it, and you can see the Syntec anchors that haven't been filled in back there as well yet. OK, so we're walking through now from the entrance hallway, the atrium, into what will become the bookshop. Now, we're really honoured that um, Richard Booth gave us permission to call this the King of Hay Bookshop, which is lovely and very fitting, uh, as he, he did have a bookshop here in the castle. Um, you can see that we've opened a new door over there, and that lines up exactly with the steps going down into the Honesty Bookshop. Um, we've got a lovely new space, um, under floor heating in here, so it won't be as cold as it has been in the past. Um, and we've got a little void opened up in the ceiling as well, um, which was where a staircase was originally. So it'll be a nice light space in here. And from this bookshop here, which will be selling both secondhand and new books, we can walk along the hallway and we will just meet where the cafe counter is going to be. Uh, there's nothing here at the moment, but you can see where it's going to go in. We're going to have assisted service in the cafe here, so you'll come and place your order, and then the um, staff will bring it to you at the tables, which will be in here, which is where the cafe is. So this is a lovely space, really nice and light, um, and really nice room for putting tables in. Um, there's still a lot of plastering to do in here, but what you can't see is the huge amount of work that's gone on there's structural steels in the ceiling um, because the floor was actually collapsing and we had several aquaprops in here for a long time. Uh, we've got a fireplace over here, which is an original fireplace, really beautiful. And anyone who came here for events in the past will remember us having that lit. And it's going to be working in the future as well. So in the winter, this will be a lovely, cosy space. Um, and then looking out onto the castle lawns, which, although at the moment are filled with uh, builders' equipment and materials, you get a really lovely view out of the lawns and the Black Mountains from your seat in the cafe. Okay, I'm back into the hallway here. Um, you get a chance to see this lovely spine wall. Um, and it's where we're keeping the original features to show you what the place was like originally. But it also gets a chance to see some little details. So over here, you can see the little holes made by the Death Watch beetle. We've had a huge problem with Death Watch Beetle, um, and it's be there's infested with them, but apparently once we get the building dry, once the roof is on and everything, they will just die out. They, they only like damp buildings, um, so we're keeping an eye on them. Um, and if we go along the spine wall here, you see the lovely carpenter's work, and you can search out for little carpenter's marks along the way as well. But over here, what I wanted to show you was the kind of evidence we have from the history of this place, because we've got... A little bit of burnt wood down here, uh, which is from the 1977 fire. So you can see what happened there. And this is original timber here with the lovely um, carved work on it. And then you've got restoration work from the 80s, um, probably done by Roger Caps from Caps and Caps. And then into the work that we've done in, since 2018. So you can really see how it's blended in, but you still get a chance to appreciate the history of this building and have it as a working space. Okay, we have quite a few staircases in the building, and this one uh, is original, although it has been almost completely rebuilt, because we discovered that it was almost hanging in midair. So everything has been taken down, uh, re rebuilt, restructured with um, steel in and the original treads put back in. And that brings us to here, which is our print room. And we're gonna have the lovely Columbia letterpress put in this side here. And we'll have activities to do with letterpress and printing and books and everything like that. Um, and then the opening there, which was a window if you remember in the past, that takes you through onto the mezzanine that we mentioned earlier, that goes along to the stairs and the lift. So this is back in the atrium. 
is a little confusing sometimes working out where you are in the building. So here you'd walk along, you can get to the staircase, which is going to fill in that void there. You'd be able to go up and access the top floor or go into the keep over there. And in here we have the education space. So, like the cafe downstairs, it's the same kind of space, same size, um, but you get beautiful light in here, and we've got the lovely leaded window you can see over in the corner. So this is going to be the claw learning space, and we'll have all our activities and workshops, talks, anything that you need a space like that to work with, for the community, for events, for anything like that. Really lovely space, but interestingly in here you get the chance to see some of the work that's been done in the ceiling. So if we look up, you can see there's huge red steels that have been put in. Um, the castle was in a little sorry state as concerns movement, um, and it was necessary to put a lot of structural work in here, but it's all going to be hidden again um, once the ceilings are put in. And here we have a lovely opportunity to look at some of the work that the stonemasons have done. So we've got an old window there and a new window here. So if we look at the old window over here, you can see how um, over the years the wear and tear has shows on this stone. And this window's okay, it's still structurally sound. But because of the fire and the many years without a roof, some of the windows were beyond this state. And so then we had to put replacements in, and this is what you can see here. So this has been worked on by the stonemasons. We had Hugh Peachy and his apprentice Jordan, and we've also had work done by Armstrong. Um, and it's beautiful to look at the marks because it's all done by hand and you can see the stonemasons um, tool marks as you would have seen on the original windows. Um, these windows will have glass put in, they're going to look like they did originally with the diamond leaded glass and the reason they don't have any of this here at this point is because it was all um, burnt out in the fire in 1939. Okay, so now we're going up from the um, first floor with the education space and the print room. And we're going up our staircase past a lovely new post that's been protected there. And up onto the top floor, which we're in the attic space here, up in the roof. Um, and what we've got here is going to be the archive and reading room. Uh, really exciting space for... Um, items about the history of the, not only the castle but of hay as well. Um, there'll be comfy chairs to sit in, there's going to be iPads where you can look at all the information we've gathered over the years and also we were very um, kindly gifted a stained glass from Richard Booth that will be on display here along with a permanent display of his amazing crown jewels that he's also donated to the castle. So it'll be a lovely space up here, really nice and relaxing and with lovely views out over the town as well. Okay, so here we're on the top floor and we're in the gallery space. It's a beautiful space and you get the chance to see the beautiful details on the roof here. Um, because it's going to be a gallery, it's been um, built to really, really high standards of both um, temperature and humidity control and security. So what you wouldn't believe is that we're actually in a big steel cage here. So in the walls and the roof, there's metal mesh so that um, if we do possibly have really important items here on display in the future, um, people can't get in and steal them. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to have really great exhibitions and bring really important things to Hay. And fingers crossed, we're going to have our opening exhibition with the National Portrait Gallery when we open. Um, from the gallery space here, you'd actually enter through the door over here. And this takes us out onto the second floor mezzanine or sculpture gallery. So if you come out into the light, you get the chance to see this fantastic space. Um, you'll be right at the top of the building, and what you get to see here is where we are a little bit disappointed with being behind on getting the roof back in. So the steel structures you see over there, the red, you can see on the top of them where the roof is going to go. But because we have to wait to get the rest of the steels in for the staircase and the lift before we can start on the roof, that means that um, we're a little bit delayed on that. But it'll be so exciting when we do get this in and we get the roof on and we have this beautiful structure with the original stone tiles back on. And we'll have a lovely opening, a glass, sliding glass panel in the roof as well, which will not only let you see the view of the fantastic chimneys, but is also practical in that it's a smoke system uh, in case of fire. So yeah, just lovely to have this fantastic space up here 
and uh, when it's open and when that's back on from the outside the castle will look as it was originally intended so we're putting original roof lines back on but inside you'll have this really surprising and exciting space so we're up on the roof um, fantastic views from up here and there's a really nice bit here you can see the view out over the black mountains and the gables that we're rebuilding so in the um 1939 fire we lost the two gables on this side so you can see just over here that they've been rebuilding and it's really lovely to see what the stonemasons have been doing so they'll be rebuilding the little windows and you can just see the stonemasons mark that's been carved in the stone there which i think are lovely details for the future as well here you can see what the stonemason was trying to recreate over there so the little window that you're building and in these gables um, we have the little wi um, window openings that would have gone into the attic space uh, and you can see one of the finials that we were talking about just there. Um, this area is also really interesting because you can see where the roof has been rebuilt and if we just walk this way uh, we took off all of the stone tiles on this roof, went back, took the felt off and the battens and have redone the whole thing so it's now insulated got new battens on it and the original stone tiles have been put back on they're really beautiful tiles and it's really lovely to be able to have the original ones back on the site um, and then that's going to go across on the new side as well where we're replacing the roof but it's um, fantastic to see up here and to see the chimneys as well which we're often asked about because they're brick and um, they are original from the 17th century um, and have been slightly restored as well, just to make sure that everything up here is going to last for a good while longer. Okay, so there's one thing we haven't shown you, and that's the medieval tower. So we're going to go down there now, out from the atrium hallway, down these steps, we're going to go underneath where the big staircase will be, and down the steps here. Now, if you tried to go down here about five years ago, it would have been very difficult, and actually, it had been condemned as unsafe. What we had in the past was a Victorian brick-lined wine cellar down here, but it was agreed that this could be removed and all of the bricks were taken out and revealed this space down here. Now, what's really exciting about this is what we found on the wall here. So you can just about make out, it's difficult because of the scaffolding, but there's the stones that show an archway in there. Now, that is hugely exciting because it does prove that this medieval keep was once a gateway and there was a gate on the front side to town and a gate on the back here so you could go through it. Now this part of the building, oh and there's a little little opening here, we don't quite know why this is here, some point in history, uh, might have been a coal chute or something and it was where our little bat, there was one bat that we found during all the surveys that we did on site and he lived in there but he's been built a new habitat elsewhere and moved. Um, this part of the building strangely is much uh, in a much better condition than the mansion but when you think about it it's because it was built as a medieval defensive tower, has much thicker walls and has actually stood uh, the test of time better. Um, when we uh, have finished in here, we've got quite a low roof at the moment because of the scaffolding, but there's going to be a floor put in above us, but a lot higher, so you'll have a bigger space here. And what we're going to do is we've been working with a company called Image Makers, who do interpretation design, and they have come up with this animation that they're going to project onto the walls in here, and that animation is going to tell the story of Hay Castle from Matilda de Breos to Richard Booth. So, just coming up one of the ladders that link the levels of scaffolding at the moment, just going to close this for safety. So, obviously that isn't how you're going to get in here in the future. What we'll have is a doorway here, coming through from the hallway, and this comes into the first floor of the medieval tower. So we're one floor above the cellar that we were in earlier. So if you have a look at this building in here, you can see that it's actually gone through quite a few changes over time. And over here, we have these uh, decorative windows and then a big fireplace next to them. So although it was originally a medieval keep, it did later become a domestic setting in about the 15th, 16th century. So it was lived in. Um, and over here, these were also added, which is a little 
vice staircase. So this is quite a surprise for us and it's been really brilliant in that we're going to be able to let visitors go up there safely when we're open. So you'll be able to climb this little staircase and look down onto the floor below. And we actually have another one as well, which is up a couple of floors higher than this, which you can also go up when we're open. Okay, we're on the top of the tower now, and you get here through this doorway here, which would mean a journey in the lift right to the top or climbing all the way up the staircase. And when you walk through this doorway here, you walk out into a viewing platform right at the top of the tower. Now, this viewing platform has been designed in close collaboration with CADU, and if you don't know what CADU is, they're like the Welsh version of English heritage, and CADU have been involved because we are, of course, in a scheduled ancient monument here. This medieval tower has been here for about 900 years, so it's quite important that what we designed had minimal impact. So you can see the view there, but if you go over here, you'll see the other vice that I mentioned earlier, and if you climb these steps here, you get an even better view from the top. So from here, you get this almost 360 degree view out over the landscape. And what it allows you to do is appreciate Hay Castle's place in this kind of border landscape and see the reason why it was built here um, in, this, in the marches, which was the borderland between England and Wales. Um, and Hay Castle is just one of many castles in this area. And we really look forward to being able to share this view with visitors when they can come in here when we're open next year.